So I'm going to start recording. Um, yes. So where are we at now? We have been talking about the density matrix, right? And let me go to full screen. Yeah, so where were we? We pick up where we left off. We have been talking about the density matrix, right? And we are kind of like doing it in the context of the Stern-Galak experiment. So this is in Stern-Galak experiment part 3. Uh, although, of course, it's just a concrete experiment to help us imagine a lot of situation. But, like I, but the concept of density matrix can be applied to other systems as well. It doesn't always have to be the Stern-Galak experiment. But we have shown that um, Stern-Galak ex experiment is a case where I got two states, two outcomes. And then we're measuring things in two in many many different directions we just it's kind of like saying that we are measuring in a different basis of measurement okay so the eigen eigenstates of the z poly matrix is a different eigenstate of the of the y poly matrix and uh, since eigenstate serves as the basis of a hilbert space we can transform from one basis into another and what we have tried what we have shown in the previous class was that um for a stern gala experiment or any experiment with two eigenstates two dimensional Hilbert space with two outcomes uh, the most general density matrix can be written expressed in terms of the poly matrices right and and so that means any experiment whether it's stern gala or not as long as it's two outcomes we can represent them using the poly matrices okay uh, so in order to do that, we want to really understand uh, the stern gala experiment even further because once you understand that, we can transform a lot of the concepts over to the uh, other parts as well. Am I recording? Yes. Yes. Your <laughs> roommate got drunk and... Okay. Uh, law, yeah, so in once you go to campus, and this is, I guess this is what we call campus life, uh, you will get a lot of uh, interesting and funny stories in your life over there, right? Meeting new people and all those kinds of uh, stories. Okay, so we are measuring uh, spin uh, in arbitrary direct uh, in some arbitrary direction. Okay, because uh, we are continuing what we did last time. If we want to measure the spin in z, we do it the sigma z. Uh, if we measure spin in x, we use sigma x. We measure y, we use uh, sigma y. So if for an arbitrary direction, then which operator that we use? Well, if the direction is some represented by some vector n, then the corresponding measurement operator shall be uh, n dot sigma, right? If my measuring in the x direction, then dot, I get the sigma x. If I'm measuring the z direction, I dot this, you get uh, sigma z. So therefore, in any generalized arbitrary directions, uh, generally it's going to be uh, like this. So nx sigma x, ny sigma y, uh, nz sigma z. So this n vector is just to tell us the direction. So it should be a unit vector. So unit vector means the length is 1. So in other words, the x component square, y component square, z component square, this is equals to 1. So hopefully now we see something more comfortable, right? We have been dealing with bra cat vectors, but this is just a normal vector that we've been doing since mechanics uh, and electromagnetism, okay? So if I write down, uh, be remember, right, all these poly matrices are 2 by 2 matrices, and um, so should I... Um, yeah, so let me just remind everyone, what are the poly matrices here? Might as well just write everything out here. Right, so sigma x is given by this, and then sigma y is uh, negative i, i, 0, and sigma z is 1, 0, 0, minus 1, right? So these uh, are uh, the eigenstates. Uh, these are the operators where the eigenstates are for the z direction. So 1, 0, and then down z is 0, 1. Okay, so this is our standard basis uh, most of the time. So our z is our most favorite basis that we use all the time. And in this basis, our poly matrices take this form. And then if I write out the values explicitly, then it's just, uh, well, it's just nz, right? And then this is nx minus iny. And then this is nx plus iny, right? If I, if I multiply out and put everything in, it's 
negative nz. So this is the general operator in arbitrary direction. My nz and nx, ny are all spread out inside here. But this should tell me the information of this is a measurement operator. It is Hermitian, right? So the measurement outcomes are the eigenvalues of this. So you can measure this. So the outcome will be in this direction. It will go positive this direction or negative that direction. Okay, so we do our usual thing. Having an operator, we should try to understand this operator by finding first the eigenvalues. Right? So to get the eigenvalue, we need to solve this equation, the determinant of uh, this thing minus the identity matrix. So we got this, uh, nx minus i, n, y, uh, nx plus i, n, y, and then n minus nz minus lambda. This determinant should be equal to 0 right uh yeah i kind of remember doing this just before we end our previous class but i did it quite fast right so now we are not rushing so let's do this uh properly what's the determinant of this is nz minus this the negative sign i put it here so this is nz plus lambda minus the this thing so this thing times the other thing okay so this is equals to zero uh, so I can expand the bracket. Uh, this one is just nz square minus lambda square, right? And then this one, uh, see, this is a complex number multiplied by a conjugate. So if I work this out, right, the this multiplication will cancel with this multiplication. So I'm just left with nx square plus ny square equals to zero. Okay, so uh, rearrange this minus minus. So the lambda is actually a positive. And then I got minus nz square minus nx square minus ny square equals to 0. So my lambda square is just equals to nx square plus ny square plus nz square. But this one, if you remember, this is supposed to be equals to 1. The square root of 1 is still 1. Or the square of 1 is still 1. So we got lambda square equals to 1. Right? Very easy. So we got two solutions. Uh, it's either plus 1 or negative 1. Okay? So we have found the eigenvalues of the general uh, general operator measuring the spin in any direction. So you actually, right, we noticed that we have found the eigenvalues of everyone here already, the individual, plus and minus 1. And for any state, it's also still plus and minus 1. So that is a very handy thing to remember, right? Whatever the direction, the eigenvalue is still plus and minus 1 for the n dot sigma uh, operator. But let us, now that we know the eigenvalue, let's find the eigenstates. So we stopped here in the previous class, right? Uh, let's find the eigenstates. So let me say that the eigenstates, uh, let me call this up n, because the n could be anything, right? Uh, be the eigenstate for the case where lambda equals to plus 1. So what this means is that uh, I'm going to write, uh, well, so let's write up n as the usual unknown, a, b, so that my operator is n, z, uh, nx minus iny, nx plus iny, negative nz. So if I act on this, it should give me a plus 1 uh, coming back to the same eigenstate. Right? So let's see, uh, let's see what happens if I um, multiply. Um, Hang on, I changed my mind. Um, so, uh, yes, I kind of like feel like it's going to be a bit messy. So let's do it the other way. Uh, what I'm trying to say is let's do it in this form. N dot sigma. Okay. And this is what I'm talking about, the up N state. And this will give me positive uh, up N. Right. And then, uh, the now this state, right. So this eigenstate. This is the eigenstate. Uh, then the density matrix. is uh, in the general form like this right so up and uh, up and yes I, I changed my mind uh, so this is in the general form that density matrix I told you right in the previous class we have shown that whatever it is it must be something uh, identity plus r dot uh, sigma okay so that uh, so now we want to figure out uh, what is is R okay 
So that is uh, what we want to uh, find out. So we, we actually, is not too, so this way, if you do it this way, it's gonna be so much easier because uh, we start with this equation, right? We look at this again, uh, up n is equals to uh, up n again, okay? Now, if I put this bra over here, if I put this bra over here, then this is my uh, density matrix. So now I can have a, like a very fast and quick way to figure out what's the formula for my density matrix. So my density matrix is supposed to be uh, this expression. So it's half identity plus r dot sigma, right? And this is half identity r dot sigma, okay. So now let me multiply this in, uh, n dot sigma uh, times one is identity is uh, n dot sigma, right? And then this is n dot sigma times r dot sigma. So n dot sigma times r dot sigma. Okay, so this is an operator times another operator because n dot sigma is something sigma z plus sigma y plus sigma z with coefficients. Uh, and then this is also another series of vector dot product with coefficients. So it's gonna be, a, uh, after you calculate everything, it is going to be a two by two matrix times another two by two matrix. Right, so this is why we I don't want to write the elements explicitly. It's gonna be a bit messy, so I want to keep it like this. Uh, and this one is just half i, and then plus uh, r dot sigma. Okay, so why do I write it in this way? Because remember the formula, right? So we got remember we had the formula for poly matrices. So it's in the appendix of the lecture notes and uh, it's, it goes like this, right? So A dot sigma times B dot sigma is equals to A dot B uh, identity plus complex number A cross B dot product with this, okay? So I apply this formula to here. So what I got is half N dot sigma, right? Uh, and then I got N dot R the identity and then uh, this plus i uh, n cross r dot with sigma and I got half i plus r dot sigma okay so it looks like it's getting uh, more and more messy but uh, I just want to find the equation that satisfied this right I want to find we are finding the we're supposed to find the r that satisfy this equation so if I look at this right uh, this is half i, right? So this is half i, uh, and then this is n dot r. So firstly, let's start with the identity. So I can match this, right? So if I can match this, look, this if this equation becomes half, this part will become the same, right? And then, uh, and then, uh, if if this is equal to this, then this becomes the same, and this is an n cross r. I want this to be zero. So we notice that this will be satisfied if, well, if n is parallel to r, okay? So r, well, if I want to match this the same, this whole thing will come together nicely if this is uh, half n, okay? So that means uh, this will be satisfied. Uh, and then, yeah, so then we come, we, we got the equation that uh, this left-hand side equals to uh, right-hand side. Right, so we have found this R already, so that means our uh, our density matrix correspond to this eigenstate. Well, uh, we haven't really found the eigenstate, but we have found the density matrix. Uh, it's going to be half uh, identity plus half n dot uh, sigma. Right, so if I pull out the half, it will make it nicer to look at. Uh, we got n dot sigma. Okay. How about the? Let me remind you. Okay, so it's a good thing to remind you the those poly matrices uh, formula. Is it? Um, yes. Uh, Jason has answered the question. Uh, if uh, if I say r is equal to half n, then this is a parallel. 
So if two parallel vector cross product, uh, it will disappear. So the i is gone. Then 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 there's no i on the left hand side as well, right? So just nice. Okay. So so we are on track. Then we have found the density matrix because now we are kind of like preferring. We don't really want to focus on cats anymore because now we understand the situation that sometimes a quantum state can be pure and can be mixed. So the density matrix can can cover everything, whether it's pure or mixed. So uh, we we haven't found the formula for the eigenstates of up n yet. Uh, it it might be messy. So but at least we have the density matrix and it makes things uh, easier to handle. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing for. Um, uh, we're going to do the same thing for uh, uh, down n, right? So similarly, should I do it in detail? Right, the density matrix for down n is going to be uh, down n. Should I explain the detail so you understand this better, or uh, you kind of get it? Then we can skip this part. Okay, so what is the now what is the uh, the R for down n? Right. So this is the unknown. Right. Uh, shall I? Yeah. Might as well just do it. So what I was saying is that the n dot sigma uh, acting on down n. Well, this is the the other. This is the other eigenvalue. The eigenvalue of the net minus one. So. I expect to get a uh, down eigenstate of this, okay? Uh, and then, well, if I put the bra here, outer product, right? This becomes the density matrix that we are talking about, okay? So this is half i plus uh, r dot sigma, right? And then this is minus half i plus uh, minus uh, r dot sigma okay then uh, half i yeah so if I multiply this I got half n dot sigma right and then plus uh, n dot sigma plus r uh, no not plus multiplied by r dot sigma and then this is half i minus r dot sigma so we apply the identity again, the one that I reminded you. So n dot r plus i n cross r, right? And then on the on the right hand side is minus half i minus r dot sigma. Okay. So we got a similar equation except there's a minus sign over here. So the rest is almost the same. And in fact, yeah. Uh, just the minus sign. So in fact, it will be satisfied if the r here is negative half n. So if negative half n, this will match with this, right? And then this will match with this. And then these are still parallel, opposite directions, but in the same line. So the cross product is going to be zero. So therefore, we have found that the eigenstate corresponding to down n, uh, which is down, 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 right? So this is a pure state and is equal to half uh, i minus n dot sigma okay so we have found the uh, eigenstates of the we have found the uh, eigenstates uh, the cat itself we don't i haven't really found the explicit formula yet but well we have the we have the density matrix so that's good enough already okay so these are the uh, eigenstates so what we have found is the conclusion is that the eigenstates of this dot this uh, are well it is um, rho up n which is up n up n is half i minus n dot plus sigma right so this is the eigenvalue of plus one and then for down n down and down n is taking this form right so this is the eigenvalue minus one okay 
so yeah so I think we can almost uh, we have almost solved uh, the stern gala experiment for whatever axis and basis that you want to measure already okay any questions so far okay so everything looks good right with um, hopefully at this stage yes we feel like we ha can understand almost every aspect about the the stern gala experiment already whatever direction you point um, you know what is the uh, how to calculate the probabilities and the expectation values so one last thing that we want to do is to um, is to explain or to get a very nice formula for the for the state uh, of two of two dimensional Hilbert space. Um, so for those who who knows, I'm going to mention the block sphere, right? Uh, some of you know heard of block sphere already because some of you asked about this before, and this is where it come from, right? So let me come back to the or arbitrary state. And what does the sphere have to do with anything? So let me explain. Okay, so the arbitrary state is um, is we have written in this form, right? Okay, so uh, so I should explain. I should write this here. Uh, last class, last class, right? Yeah. We shown this general form. Right, uh, we created this out of uh, out of. Uh, we just say that density matrix must be two by two. Okay, fine. It must be Hermitian. Fine. It must be trace equals to one. And we end up with these two conditions. We end up with uh, this situation. But in fact, this is uh, this can be constrained further. So the question now is uh, what we want to uh, what we want to determine is what are the allowed values. of of r okay so to do this well let us say that um let us measure uh let us measure this spin okay and we have kind of already studied this just now so let's apply our knowledge right so we have shown that remember what when every time when a quantum mechanics say you are measuring something there's an operator and we ask what are the outcomes, right? So the outcomes are the eigenvalues, which we have found, plus and minus one. And what are the probabilities? So that one was also shown in the last class. Uh, the probabilities of the corresponding eigenstates of the outcome. In other words, uh, first, let us study the probability. So the eigenstate is up n and down n, with the eigenvalues plus one and minus one. So the probability of uh, being in the state uh, up n is we do this right so this was the method we have shown uh, last time okay uh, the, and we calculated by doing the trace okay so uh, this up n up n we have found just now right is very easy it's just half overall uh, 1 plus n dot sigma right and then uh, this one came from this so is half i plus r dot sigma so there's a slight con uh, it looks very same but it's not this half is outside this half is inside right there's no half here so when you do the calculation you have to be careful now since this half is outside I'm gonna put it here right and then let me expand this bracket so if I expand this bracket uh, what do I have I got a uh, half i, right? This times this is half. This times this is r dot sigma. And then this times this is half identity, so half n dot sigma. And then this times this is n dot sigma uh, r dot sigma. So remember, this is an operator times another operator. Okay? Okay, so uh, so far so good. Um, let's see. Uh, how should I which which one should I do first? Can't decide. Uh, let let us apply the formula first. Okay, so I have half i. Um, 
then it's gonna be messy. Yeah, now mind. Uh, I think it's it's a bit longer, but I think it's more clear, so you can see every step. Okay, so this last term here is uh, n dot r identity plus i n cross r, right dot sigma. Okay, so I close the bracket over here. And what do we have? Okay, so the trace is linear, and these are the sum. So basically, what I have here is a uh, half, and then uh, half trace of the identity. Okay, uh, and then I got trace of r dot sigma plus half trace n dot sigma. Okay, and then plus. Um, n, n dot r is a number, this is not, uh, the operator here is 1, so it's n dot r trace of 1, okay, um, if you're not used to it, you have to be careful, because some things are operators, some things are numbers, so you need to keep track in your mind which are numbers, so this is n dot r, it's just two numbers dot product, uh, two, num two vector with number components dot product is 1, the operator is here, so that's why I take it out of the trace. Right, and this part is this part is this is a number, but this is a dot product. It's a bit messy, so let me just keep it inside. Okay, but I think you'll get what I what I mean. Okay, now uh, maybe you have seen this coming, or maybe not. But this trace is zero. This trace is zero. Okay. And the reason is because poly matrices are traceless. I don't know how obvious this is. Um, you can just check by expanding this and trace it yourself. Um, if you if you don't, you can ask me in the chat. But uh, right now, uh, I want to continue to this. This trace is two, so this two will cancel with this two, so this equals to one, right? Uh, this will give me a two. This one also. Uh, this is a number dot with poly matrices, so this is also zero. So what we have here is half and uh, one, and then plus two n dot r. Okay, and then the rest are zero. So this is a uh, half plus n dot r. Okay, is it clear? Uh, now what we what we're doing in the first place? Remember. We, d we did all this is because we want to find the probability of getting up n. So this is a probability of getting up n. This is a probability, right? So it should be between uh, 0 and 1. So the same thing should be for the, the other case, uh, the probability of down n. So same story, therefore I'm going to do it a bit faster. Uh, it's going to be nothing special here, same. Uh, most majority is the same, just you, uh, some of them you change with the negative sign because it's the slightly different eigenstates, uh, right? Because you get trace uh, and then you get half uh, i plus n dot sigma, right? And then the row is half i, remember this is half and then there's no half for this term, but we expand this, so we trace uh, this is half identity plus r dot sigma and then plus half n dot sigma and then plus n dot sigma r dot sigma okay so uh, I'll just skip a few steps I'll just skip so uh, um, uh, let me know if there's any mistake uh, there's a chance to get a mistake if you skip right this is see this is 2 and half so it's 1 this is 0 and this is 0 uh, this term becomes n dot r identity plus the cross product with the sigma. The cross product term should be traceless. So therefore, it's just going to be n dot r of the identity plus 0. So if I multiply this out, this is a uh, half of, yeah, half. Um, hang on a second. Why is it the same? Oh, this is down n, see? Down n, I should use the negative sign here right so down n should be the negative no 
wrong one. This one. Wow. Mistakes uh, propagating. Error propagation. So this is minus. And this is minus. Yeah. So this is minus. Yeah. So hopefully that's corrected all the mistakes. Uh, I got half n dot r. Okay. So this is the probability of getting down n. Okay, mm, let's see. So this probability of this, this probability of this, and in fact, it looks good. The sum of probabilities, uh, they sum to one, right? So yeah, uh, everything is nice. Um, any questions so far? Mm. Actually, yes, can also, yeah. Uh, you can do this. That will save time, right? So this minus this, you, you will also get this. So if you are if you want to do it faster, you do it this way, definitely. Um, but the main point that I'm uh, getting at here is these are probabilities. So okay, and the probability values that we get is well, is either a plus or a minus uh, n dot r. Okay, so probability should be a number between zero and one. Right? Probability. So that will give me a constraint of what are the possible values of R. Uh, firstly, um, firstly, let me subtract everybody by half. So I got this. And I got uh, this. Okay. And then to make it look nicer, uh, let us, instead of R, uh, let's just say that R is just A half. Right, so that I got uh, this equation plus and minus uh, n dot a half and then half, so that everything is just nice, it's just one. Okay, so I got everything like this. Now, this is n dot a, right? And what is n dot a? If you if you if we are not sure, just go back to what we are familiar, right. Uh, n dot a is a dot product, so it, it is cosine of the angle between the two vectors, right? So this is a unit vector. This equals to one, and this is going from between minus one to one, right? So since uh, n is a unit vector, this is exactly one, and then the cosine theta is from minus one to uh, one. Then therefore, the what are the possible values of a? Uh, it a itself. Uh, must be a number between uh, it is a length but that must be less than 1 less than or equal to 1 okay uh, if it's larger than 1 then I can find an angle or some direction that will that will take me outside of this number already it shouldn't be because we are supposed to talk about probabilities right so yeah so then we have uh, identified what are the uh, the possible values of uh, uh, of a already right so we have found that um, uh, we, we are using uh, r is equal to a over 2 uh, the general state is Rho is equals to half uh, identity, and then uh, R is a over two, so I got half a dot sigma. All right. So in other words, uh, a uh, my density matrix is the general form, the most general form, but we constrain it as much as possible. Is given by this, and this is a vector that must the length must be less than or equal to one. Okay, so. Let us highlight this, right? So this is the most general state of a two-dimensional Hilbert space. And if you are interested in quantum information and quantum computing, this is what is called a qubit, right? Um, but in any case, yeah. So, uh, so this is the uh, a length that of a vector that must be less than or equal to one. So that means. Uh, notice that um, the general state, the, uh, 
so everything here the 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 food so the basically the point i'm trying to say is this is identity matrix right and then this is sigma z are fixed because this is just sigma x uh, sigma y plus sigma z k so all these are fixed numbers is is basically just this So all these are constants, fixed, right? Because these are really, sigma x is sigma x, sigma y is sigma y, sigma z is sigma z. Uh, so the only degree of freedom, to use the word from theoretical mechanics, the only freedom uh, that, what, are, what is telling, what distinguishes one state from a different state is A. So in other words, um, so the A are in, so the A are uh, free, uh, so let's just say A contains uh, the information about the state yeah I guess you know what I mean right because all these are fixed so how do you tell that this state is up X or up Y right how do you tell the difference what is the information uh, what is distinguishes one from the other? It depends on how you write down the the A itself. Okay, so it contains all the uh, information about the state, and it is a vector. A vector that this is a vector that has components uh, x, y, z. So this is a vector in R three, right? Uh, of length less than equals to 1 so that means uh, all the states so all possible states can be represented somewhere inside a sphere so this is our block sphere Okay, so I mean, drawing, yeah. Uh, if even if I draw, it's just a sphere. So I everyone already knows what the sphere is like, right? So this is the a z component. So this is the a x component. This is the a y component. So it's a sphere of radius uh, one, right? So if I draw some vector, then this will tell me what is the state I am uh, talking about. Okay, so in fact, right, uh, this if I draw this, uh, this point is the eigenstate. Uh, this gives uh, eigenstate of uh, up z. Right. If you if you if you say that a is equals to k, then my vector is pointing this way, and what do I get? You will get the eigenstate of sigma z, right? Because uh, whatever this n is pointing, it will be uh, it will be a pure state that is the eigenstate of sigma z okay but uh, the, it, the the length of the vector is not just exactly equals to 1 it could be less than 1 right so whether it's exactly 1 or less than 1 will actually tell you the difference between pure or mixed state so I will here is this is why let me explain uh, page page 4 already what time is it now okay 4.40 So let us ask the question whether a state is pure or mixed. Um, so since you said that you like it when you, uh, when the person say reminding you, right? So let me remind you. Uh, for mixed states, have the property. Uh, row square is not equals to row. Okay. Uh, for if it's pure, then row is equals to row. Okay, so let's square this and see and see uh, see the difference. Okay, so if I square this, let's find out. So this is my general state for any a. Uh, so if I do row square, it's just half uh, this plus a dot sigma uh, dot product. It's not dot, it's just times, right? Not a this. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, 
uh, this a dot sigma right so half and half are outside everyone so uh, let's put this outside and then expand the bracket i dot i i times i is just i uh, i times this is a dot sigma uh, this times this is another a dot sigma and then plus a dot sigma a dot sigma okay so basically this is just identity plus 2 a dot sigma and then this is well this is a dot a plus i a cross a dot sigma a cross a is zero right the same vector cross itself is going to be zero this is just the length square so in other words what we have found is oh uh, yeah there's an identity i forgot this number times an operator this is an equation for an operator so if i factorize the i this is one plus the length of a square times the identity and then plus uh, 2a dot sigma right so i can pull out a factor of two so the half th this thing becomes half outside and this becomes one over two a dot sigma so you can see that uh, what happens to rho square so rho square uh, so this there are two possibilities right if the length is one if the length is one then this plus this is two it will cancel then it becomes half uh, identity plus a dot sigma which is back to rho if the length of a is exactly one okay so if it's less than one then yeah if it's less than one then uh then this is this is not two anymore right so uh it's a different number then uh yeah basically it's not rho if a is less than one so so now we know right uh the general state uh is half identity plus a dot sigma right so the length a is equals to one for pure states and less than one for mixed states okay So that means right if I if I remember what was the meaning of the a a you can be plotted in the x y z axis right so this is the a z this is the a x this is the a y and everything should be inside a sphere of radius one right so uh, pure states are the length exactly equals to one so pure states correspond to the surface. of the sphere and then mixed states correspond to the interior of the sphere so that is the difference and the sphere oh I haven't given the name yet this sphere is called the block sphere so you can google block sphere you can look at the wikipedia there's a lot of explanations related to it and it is an important concept especially for those doing quantum computations okay any questions so far it's cool right i yeah i also think it's cool i think to um so a colleague of mine Actually, it was Ming Chuan, uh, the one who gave the string theory talk uh, last time. You know, he said that from his experience, right, he met and worked with a lot of people that, uh, you know, um, for most physics students and people who work on physics, there are like, he, he kind of tell that there are two kinds of uh, people, who th those who think geometrically and those who think algeb algebraically. So geometric I'm think I'm the one who thinks geometrically. So if I can write if I can draw a diagram or can represent something using a shape like the block sphere, then then I can feel like understand it more. 
that I can get the understand all the moving parts about this. Uh, for those who think algebraically is it would be very good at more abstract math like using symbols and uh, formulas to to represent uh, a situation. So it, it I don't know how true is it, uh, but if it's true, then I'm the geometrical person. Okay, so in let's apply our knowledge here to the example. Uh, the example of the one I said that I corrected in the announcement just now. So there was a mistake in the calculation in originally. So now, now it should be correct. Okay, and I'm gonna do it here again. So what we are talking about here is let us try to write down the density matrix, the A vector using this concept. A beam of silver atoms is mixed uh, in a mixed state by the uh, by doing this. So you have quarter atoms in down Z eigenstate and the others are in up x so i mix all of them together uh, one quarter 25 percent is down z therefore 75 percent is this state and i want to figure out what is the corresponding density matrix yes yes uh it, it happens also uh like the the thing the the I guess the thing that people like about theoretical physics right not just mechanics but quantum physics theoretical physics theoretical mechanics is that uh, you know the 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 basic laws are actually very simple and very beautiful so the concept if you actually op when you boil down it's all easy to understand right but real life situation always combine like things are uh, very ugly so it's a uh, very messy and and it makes things very uh, ugly again so it, you always have to like you know crossing from one side to the other somehow so uh, I hope you guys have learned Hamiltonian by now so that now you understand why in quantum mechanics uh, we have been saying that Hamiltonian is kinetic energy plus potential energy right and it's not just for no reason kinetic plus potential but uh, it, there, there is some underlying structure like uh, you said about the beautiful things about theoretical mechanics that is some reason why it's like this and uh, yeah I guess um, I will talk about this a bit more when uh, when you learn more about theoretical mechanics in the future but for now, we are doing this example, okay? Uh, for this example, we are doing one quarter of atoms uh, in the down Z, okay? Uh, that was a mistake in the, in the previous version. So the question is down Z, but the solution suddenly become up Z. Uh, therefore, one quarter in down Z, therefore the 75% are up X, okay? So I want to write down the density matrix. So firstly, I'm mixing this with this so let us write them separately first the down uh, well down anything vector again reminding you since you like reminding is half if it's down right it is half of the corresponding direction of this right so this is where uh, a is equal to negative n and in particular I'm talking about down z so n is equal to the z direction k so the down z down z eigenstate is half uh, i k dot sigma picks out the z poly matrix okay and then same thing for this if i'm doing the up eigenstate right uh, up eigenstate is identity plus n dot sigma but i'm talking about up x so i use n equals to i direction okay so this is up x up x is half i plus sigma x okay so these are the two these are pure states they are separate uh but we haven't mixed them yet okay so so far so good everything not yet huh? still lagrangian okay okay good good uh it's on track yeah so there is also an interesting question like 
how come Schrodinger equation uses the La Hamiltonian and not the Lagrangian? Uh, if you do the Feynman path integral, the Lagrangian will come back again. So it, it's a very interesting interplay between the two. So for the next part, uh, well, we haven't finished yet. We are supposed to mix these two states, right? Uh, it is one quarter up z, uh, down z, down z, and then uh, three quarters of up x, up x. Okay, so basically I got uh, one quarter of this state plus three quarters of this state. Okay, uh, to make things easy, uh, everyone has a factor of one over eight, so let me put it outside. This is i minus sigma z. Uh, plus 3i plus 3 sigma z. So this is 1 over 8, uh, 4i, and then plus 3 sigma z minus sigma z. So let me uh, write this in the general form. So I put, I multiply the 1 quarter inside so that this becomes half, and then this becomes 1 quarter of 3 sigma x minus sigma z. Okay, so this is the the general uh, form of the matrix. So this is the this is like the block vector where my vector is one quarter of three uh, i minus k. Okay, so this is my block vector corresponding block vector of this state. Okay. Uh, what was the this? Okay, so the row square and find whether it's a pure state or um, brightness brightness whether this is a pure state or a mixed state well I got the A already I can answer this a bit quickly if I have the A notice that what is the length of A uh, length of A square is 1 over 16 9 plus 1 so this is 10 over 16 so this is 5 over 8 it is a number that is less than 1 so this is a mixed state okay and since the question is asking for row square, we should at least find out what is row square, right? So row square, the general formula we already found just now. So I'm a bit lazy to do everything again. Let me just recycle this thing. Okay, so one quarter, uh, half one plus uh, mod A square, identity plus A dot sigma. Okay, so we have found the row square is 5 over 8. So this is 1 half, uh, half. This is 8 over 8 plus 5 over 8. So it's 13 over 8. Am I right? And then plus a dot sigma. Okay, so this is half 13 over 16 identity plus, yeah, a dot sigma. Uh, the a was 1 over 4. 3 sigma x minus sigma z. Okay, definitely not equals to rho square. Looks, uh, this part will, this part is spoiling it. So this is a mixed state. Okay, uh, this is page 6. And one last thing that we are supposed to do. So, yeah, I will take a break after this. So our 10 minutes break will be after this, but uh, one last thing to do is to measure, let's read the question. The measurement of angular momentum along an axis of angle pi over 4, 45 degrees from the x-axis uh, and x-y is performed. So uh, it's just trying to tell you that the direction is uh, between the x and y, x-y plane. Uh, so it's i, j. Okay. Um, so this is my n vector and what was my uh, a vector? So my a vector was 1 quarter. Uh, 3i minus k. Can I change mix to pure by normalizing the a vector? Um, yeah, that's why you can't because if you normalize it manually, then you are changing the state already. So you can't, right? Because you are you are changing the state basically, right? Um, so there's no physical reason why why a mixed state can turn into pure. So um, the simple answer is no. But then in quantum information, right, there are advanced techniques called uh, to, to um, 
from a mixed state, I, you want to filter out the set of pure states. Uh, that is a different procedure. Right, so it's called state purification. It's not, it's not by normalizing the A. Um, so, so we got the N and the A here, and the, what we want to measure right, is the spin along this direction. So that means I want to measure this thing. Okay, and I want to find what is the expectation value. So expectation value, we follow our formula that we developed in the previous class. The expectation value of the operator is taking this operator and you trace it with the row. Okay, so let us expand this expression. Uh, this is n dot sigma. A row is half i plus a dot sigma and there's a half so let's take the half out and then i take the trace uh, n dot sigma dot identities so you get the same thing and then n dot sigma uh, a dot sigma okay so what you have here is uh, the trace of n dot sigma this is gonna be zero and this is n dot a identity plus i n cross a uh, dot sigma okay so it is going to be 0 plus half n dot a trace of the identity plus 0 so th the first and last term uh, because there's a sigma alone so sigma poly matrices are traceless so each of this contains three terms but each of them when you take the trace is going to be 0 uh, and then trace of 1 is just 2 so I cancel the 2 so it's just n dot a and what's n dot a so it's just uh, this dot product with this right so it's 1 over root 2 i plus j uh, dot product with 3i minus k so the only non-zero term is going to be 3 over 4 root 2 so this is our expectation value okay so that's it for the uh, stern galak experiment. Yeah, yes, that's a good point. Um, I think basically the concept that we should keep in mind is that mixed state and pure state are like different consequences, right? Because the mixed state is something we can do in everyday life. Like the coffee mixed with water, you take the mark green, uh, tennis uh, or green marble red marble you put it in a bag you mix them together you stir it uh, that is mixed states it, you can do it in everyday life but the quantum state is like quantum in quantum mechanics right and usually you c we don't do it in everyday life because you can only observe it in small particles with electrons and and all those kind of things okay so with that let us take a break uh, let me stop the recording so start recording. So the Heisenberg picture is um well I'll tell you the story soon. Let me write this down first. Uh, seven point four. So why is it called the Heisenberg picture? Uh, there are two pictures in quantum mechanics. Actually, everything that we have been doing so far, uh, actually is called the Schrodinger picture. Oh, okay, sorry, the screen. Thanks, thanks. When did I unshare it? Okay, I'm recording, I'm recording. Okay, thanks. Okay, so now you can see, yes. So the, the Schrodinger, the, what we have been doing so far is the uh, Schrodinger picture. Okay, and what does the Schrodinger picture mean? Uh, well, there is a distinction between the uh, operators and the states. So in the Schrodinger picture, right, our operators are fixed. Uh, and then the states evolve right this is why we have the equation 
that is for Schrodinger equation. So the Schrodinger equation is a differential equation to tell us how the state evolve and we when we use an operator is corresponding to some measurement so these are uh, fixed right so just to help us uh, remember what is happening here you know a state is a vector in Hilbert space so let me just draw a vector even though it's not very accurate right it's a vector and in Hilbert space it is a function of time so that means as time goes on uh, this vector will change right so it might, so this vector will change because depending on the Hamiltonian right and we, we solve this so we have done all the examples last time the ammonia maser the the uh, the Lamor precession right and uh, all the potential the harmonic oscillator all these things right the hydrogen atom these are we are studying the eigenstates and we see how they evolve uh, over time in fact if we know the eigenstates are Hamiltonian they evolve by the exponential function right we have done this uh, quite a lot last time and then the operators so an operator is something that eats a vector and spits out a new vector so um, let me so this is an operator right it's an operator uh, and this is fixed okay so the formula for the operator is fixed we are changing this in time and then we calculate all the uh, expectation values and all those things so the, n the, the thing that we want to study right now uh, is just, actually we won't go in much detail, just a short part before, uh, towards the end of the semester, uh, only is that this is the Heisenberg picture. Okay, so the Heisenberg picture is uh, operators evolve. And then the states are fixed. Okay, so what does this, the, the cat, so I should say the, the cat, not to say states. Because now, now we understand, cat can represent a state, but now we can also use operator, the density matrix to represent a state. So I should say it's a cat. Okay, so this time it is the operator that is evolving with time. Right, so this is the one that is changing. So A is a function of T now. Okay, uh, but this state is now uh, fixed. It's independent of time. So a simple way to imagine these two situations is, mathematically speaking, right, it depends on which, what basis you are following, right? So operator fixed means, you know, you are looking at a, uh, you are using the camera that is following the operator, then everything else will be uh, changing. But over here, right, if you use a camera to follow the state, then the other one that had will have to change correspondingly, right? So it depends on which part you are following, which point of view you are following, okay? So if you fix this point of view, then the other one is changed. But if you fix the other point of view, it's this one that will change, okay? So this is why we have uh, two different pictures of quantum mechanics. So the standard way to learn is the Schrodinger picture. In some sense, it's a bit easier to understand and a bit easier to learn. But for the Heisenberg picture, uh, again, um, this one also, we will derive an equation like towards the end, probably we finish it on Monday or uh, next Thursday, that uh, um, if you reach the Hamiltonian chapter in theoretical mechanics, we will derive an equation that looks very similar, okay? So, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Okay, uh, so where are we now? Uh, chapter 7. So next is chapter 8. Okay, what's this? ODE, QM monster. <laughs> yeah, good point. Oh, I, I wrote the A on the body. Oh, I wrote this A outside. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so now we try to shift our viewpoint to look at the uh, time dependent uh, operator. So this is this part, 7.4.1. Uh, we need to say what we mean by time dependent operators. 
Okay. Um, so let me uh, start with something that we are familiar with. So let us recall, like um, in the in the Schrodinger picture. Okay. So in the Schrodinger picture, right? Uh, let's say I have some initial state. Uh, psi, okay, and then this system is controlled by some Hamiltonian. If it's a ammonia maser, then you know what's the Hamiltonian, right? So, and then you know what's the initial state, okay? So, this is the initial state. Then, at a later time, the, uh, the state is given by uh, psi of t, right? And, um, and it is e minus ihT over h bar. So this was something I have shown you, uh, was it like two, three classes ago, right? Uh, this is a exponential of an operator acting on this, okay? So at some initial state, the state at time t is this because the Hamiltonian is a generator of time evolution. That was the thing that we were talking about last time, right? So we spent uh, quite some time doing the Taylor series. I tried to convince you that if I Expand if uh, if you expand it in the eigenstates of the basis of the Hamiltonian, this is actually the same as the Taylor series for the normal exponential for the calculus for the numbers, and then th and for this reason they are the similar things, right? And part of a this is true because uh, it satisfies the the state we are at some point of our calculation we use the Schrodinger equation. Okay, so that was uh, what we were, what we have been doing. Um, and let us take the bra because we're going to use this later. So this is the operator now. It's not a number, so I need to be careful with the directions. So this is psi e uh, i h t over h bar. Okay, so we got this. And now let us try to, let me show you how to change the viewpoint. So let's look at some observable. Uh, at the moment, we are kind of still in the Schrodinger picture. So, but anyway, let an operator A be some observable. Okay. And if you observe something, you know, you can do the experiment, you get the probabilities, or in particular, I want to focus on the expectation value. So the expectation value is what? Now it's too bright. So if I want to calculate, if I observe something, what is the expectation value? Uh, in statistics, it's just called the averages or the mean, right? And uh, well, you do the state, and then you do the bra, and then you do this. We have been doing this many times already. But as you notice, right, it depends on the time t. So the expectation value is the expectation value of time t. And it is given by, you take the state at time t and then you close with this and then uh, this and then this okay now this is where we try to shift our viewpoint so this state is equal to this so let me substitute this here and this state is equal to this so this psi of t can be substituted into here so this is actually just the initial state per psi and then this is the e i h t over h bar and the operator A, and then E minus I H T over H bar, and then the initial state psi. Okay, so I can actually this equation. If I write everything out, it looks like this. So pre, pre, th this was our Schrodinger picture because this is our state at time t, and this is our cat at time t, right? So this is how we got everything. So this was the Schrodinger picture. So far, I haven't done anything new yet, nothing special, right? It's just repeating what we did last time. But now, let's take another viewpoint. Okay, uh, my expectation value, if I write this formula again, okay, so write this formula again, psi e i h t over h bar a e minus i h t over h bar, Aside. Now I'm just copying this down and then the Schrodinger viewpoint is looking at this as the state but now right if I look at it in, an, in another way 
you notice that this is an operator times an operator times another operator. So all these are operators multiplied together, you get a single operator, and whatever the operator is, it depends on t. So this is a time dependent operator. So this is what we mean by changing the viewpoint. Okay, Schrodinger picture, Heisenberg picture is this is a time dependent operator. So it is some operator that depends on time. Okay, and it depends on time in this way. So that is uh, where we come to. Now we take the viewpoint of uh, we study the operator. So in the Schrodinger picture, we study how the cat evolves. Right, and then you, you do your calculation at different times and all these things. We did all this from chapter 1 to now. Uh, but right now, the cat are just something we focus on how this evolved now. So that is the Heisenberg picture. Okay, so the Heisenberg picture is, we are talking uh, for uh, system that it, well look notice look at this it depends on the hamiltonian so different systems might have different hamiltonians so for a system with hamiltonian h and an operator let's call uh operator a right uh and this a is initially right notice that uh for for time equals to zero, right? Uh, what is a equals to zero? Well, uh, the exponential of zero is become the identity, so it's back to a. Okay, so for uh, operator a initially, then at a later time, okay, t greater or including zero, you just come back to a. You just get the formula where this is e uh, i h t over h bar a e minus i h t over h bar so just be slightly careful there's a there's a minus sign here but no minus sign here okay okay so yeah so this is an example of a, a time evolving uh, operator so Um, yeah, so does everyone follow so far? Okay, so hopefully it's not too difficult, right? It's just like uh, something very natural uh, if, I, if you write it in this way. So it's, uh, haven't I haven't done anything more difficult compared to the past of what we did last, other things last time. Okay, so, but right now, okay, if you look at it this way, then fine. This is how the operator evolves. But the problem now is th the, the time evolution depends on the exponential times operator times another exponential. Usually, this kind of thing is very hard to calculate. In fact, for exponential of uh, just the ammonia maser, right? if you want to calculate this, probably it's not very convenient to do this. Okay. So um, what we are going to do is to kind of try to circumvent this situation and ultimately we want to uh, develop a theory of how to uh, study the uh, time evolving operators, right? So um, let us start with the basic two conjugate variables which is position and momentum. So suppose the operators are x and p okay so x and p at time zero uh, is just our standard original operator x but if i evolve with time t right then it will become some other operator that may not be the same as before okay uh, and then if you p also if i evolve in time then i get some other operator okay so yeah what's the big deal the big deal now is since the operator is changing in time the eigenstates for the old operator may no longer be the eigenstates anymore because the operator has changed into something else 
so imagine the matrix whose numbers have changed as a function of time so if you change the matrix then the the eigenvalue may and eigenvectors may no longer be the same so that is the one problem that we need to uh, handle right so the main point is operators have changed so that means uh, x and p may or may not be right maybe by coincidence at a certain time t you come back to the same eigenstate but in general may may no longer be eigenstates anymore okay so another just to hammer down this point the new the eigenstates at some time may be something else okay so to help us imagine again right remember what's the meaning of eigenstate if you just come back to the r3 vectors so just a vector in two two dimensional space right a vector is an operator that operator will eat a vector and give you a new vector but eigenstate they eat the vector and come back the vector along the same direction right maybe the length have changed depends on the eigenvalue okay so if my operator has changed into something else then the eigenvector may not be this this eigenvector anymore it could be some other eigenvector okay so let us refer to this eigenvector at some time t as the following okay so let us try to construct uh, what are the new eigenstates at t so let us suppose uh, that the eigenstate is still related to position right it's still an x operator okay um, but it might depend on time now okay so at time t this will be the eigenstates so if this is an eigenstate then it should give me the eigenvalue okay uh, like this so the equation looks the same but now i attach a t here just to emphasize that uh, at time at, at one second is some vector at another uh, 10 seconds it might be a different vector right if a different state so same thing for momentum like this okay so this one is just eigenvalue it has nothing to do with time um, uh, it's just the eigenvalue corresponding to this eigenbasis okay so that is one thing and because these are still you know these are still observables then they should still satisfy the similar properties to the last time right so one of the properties that we want them to satisfy is the uh, at fixed t uh, it should have the same orthonormality relation okay so in other words if i take this some other x and then if i do the inner product with this uh, it should be the delta function okay how we remember this it feels like it's been quite a while since we write wrote this down uh, and same story for this okay this one we seldom use okay we seldom use um, but to emphasize right uh, it must be same t okay so it should be the same and then this is still an Hermitian observable just that at a different time t uh, it should have the same spectral decomposition right so if i fix a time t at fixed time uh, spectral decomposition means i can take a summation with the eigenvalues and then the cat bra of each eigen state so for position operator the the set of eigen values are continuous the set of eigen states are also continuous so instead of a summation you will do an integration okay and again everything here must be at the same time t okay so same story for my momentum at a fixed time i can do a spectral decomposition over the eigenvalues pt uh, pt okay 
then uh, we should also have completeness relation Uh, so if I in without the eigenvalue, uh, if I just do the cat bra, it should be one, right? And same thing over here should also be one. Okay. Um, what else do we need? Yeah. Uh, oh, in the inner product. So everything that we're doing here is must be calculated at the same time. So if I take this bra at the same time and the cat at a different time, then no longer true. So it must be the same time. Okay, and then the XP inner product was uh, 2 pi h bar. E to the i x p over h bar. Okay, so this is the inner product. And then another condition to you know to in order to make contact with what we need later is uh the the this one right the Schrodinger picture and the Heisenberg picture is for the cat and the operator. But when at the end of the day when you do the wave function, the wave function should still be the same, right? Because no matter what picture you use, the wave function is something where you can measure the probability distribution. So it shouldn't depend on the picture you use. The probability is the probability, right? Uh, so the wave function at time t is what? Well, um, if I take this xt and then if I close it with this state, right? Uh, this should give me the wave function at time t. So this is uh, xt, right? But when we were doing the Schrodinger picture, uh, it is this and then it is the state that is evolving okay so this was what this is the Heisenberg picture this is the Schrodinger picture okay so what page is this nine what time is it 34. You always want to cancel. Yeah, don't because they're operators, so they may not commute. So this way you have to be careful. Uh, same x different t. Yeah, cannot right. So as long as it's different, uh, cannot. So everything is only for. Uh, so all this is only for. Same t. Same x doesn't help you. Okay, uh, but it must be same t. Okay, so yeah, this is the wave function, and then uh, how about the uh, momentum operator? So the um, the momentum operator at time t. Uh, for the Schrodinger, right? For the Schrodinger picture. Uh, what was the momentum operator? If I take the momentum acting on the state, right? What does it mean for the wave function? So if I calculate what is the wave function of the moment after the momentum acted on this, this is h bar over i taking the derivative, right? Taking the derivative of, right? So this is why we write things like this in the when we're calculating the potential well, right? So we're doing the. Uh, this is what we do for the. Uh, momentum operator. So we want to apply the same rule for for now. This the the these are the eigenstates of a changing operator. So this is changing over time. The state is fixed. Okay. So the state is fixed. Uh, hang on. Yeah, so the state is fixed. So therefore, we got uh, uh, h bar over i d dx uh, x t, and then the sign. Okay. So if I if I look at this right, uh, these two states are arbitrary. So we conclude that uh, we conclude that the momentum operator 
uh, acting on this to the left is h bar over i and then taking the derivative of uh, xt over here okay and then if you do the complex conjugate if you do the bra uh, if you change this into a cat this is like p xt and then take the complex conjugate this is h bar over i uh, d dt xt okay so we got the um, yeah minus sign basically okay uh, how about commutators so yeah uh, so you said Jia Sheng, was it Jia Sheng? yeah Jia Sheng would say that you want to cancel the exponential right uh, maybe you feel a bit more satisfied for this uh, for commutators I'm gonna use the the exponential explicitly so what is the commutators uh, at the same t so what is uh, when the when the time has at a uh, time t the x the operator x has become this and the operator p has become this right what does this mean well uh, just now we said that this is like the time evolution is i h t over h bar uh, this is the initial x this is e i h t over h bar and then commutator with e uh, i h bar t over h bar p e minus i h t over h bar okay and then we expand this and do the commutator so that means this is e i h t over h bar x e minus i h this thing and this thing right and then minus with the opposite order so e i h bar t over h bar p e minus this thing and the other thing okay so uh, these two are next to each other right if they're right next to each other then they can cancel uh, same thing here these two and this can, are right next to each other so they can cancel this is in the middle got the x and got a p so they, they cannot pass through each other right we don't know what is the Hamiltonian in general we, we do not expect it to commute with x right so what we have here is e i h bar t and then we got um, um, at the front also i can factorize out this right so this is uh, x p minus p x and then i just like uh, can't decide whether i want to write out the details or not but anyway uh what is this this is x and p my original x and p so this is i h bar right so in this sense i h bar times the identity so this is e i h t over h bar i h bar identity times this uh then only you can cancel so in this sense yes you can do it in uh this way but in any case uh we want the commutator to satisfy this so that is consistent to every uh, consistent to our calculation that we have so far <laughs> so now you feel very comfortable good yeah so this is where you have to be careful sometimes you see operator right like normally you would do some cancellation but if it's operator you cannot swap positions uh, number you can swap position that's why you can do the cancellations okay so now we got this and another just a reminder must be same t right uh does same x it won't help you same p whether it's the same or not no point uh we just want the t okay so this is the thing that we um this is what we want to uh study over here so we got nine minutes left let's see how far we can go so like i said right um uh, so like I said we want to uh, should I yeah let's write the like our line of thinking that we have over here because if I suddenly jump the calculation like it feels like what's the what's the reason of doing this okay so what we want to do is um, what we want right uh, given a system so if I have a system, that means I have the Hamiltonian, right? So whether it's an ammonia maser or hydrogen atom or a potential well, whatever, 
right? Given a system like this, okay, uh, usually I want to say, okay, what is the uh, evolution of the system? So now we understand that uh, we cal uh, in the shown in the in I should say that in the Heisenberg picture. Right. So given a system H, let's say uh, let's say uh, we want uh, an expectation value of an operator Q. Right. So in the Heisenberg picture, uh, we need the Q as a function of time, and then we and then we do this later. Right. So we need uh, this. Okay. So that means uh, what we want to do is we want to know how. An operator evolves. Okay, so how an operator? So we want to know how an operator evolves. So therefore, we want uh, some kind of uh, equation of motion. So how does the system evolve? We have we have been doing physics for a few semesters now, right? And how something evolves usually comes from a differential equation. So we are going to do the same thing here. We want a differential equation. For the operator that is changing in time. Okay, so um, in this next few steps that we will calculate uh, today and next week, for example, I want to have a differential equation of uh, dx dt, right, and it's equals to what? And we are going to do it for position, and we're going to do it for uh, momentum. And in general, there are other observables where you can find differential equations. But what we are going to do is, yes, let us find a differential equation for this. Okay. So this is a Heisenberg picture. We already solved this in. We already know this in the Schrödinger picture. Right, so Schrodinger picture. If I if I want to find a property, right, I need to know to know the state that evolves with time. So therefore, the Schrodinger equation, the differential equation, is the Schrodinger equation, which is I h bar partial partial t. Right, this is the Schrodinger equation. Uh, tells us. How psi evolves over time, right? And in fact, we kind of solve a general solution. We have not only derived the equation; we have derived the solution already. Okay, uh, it's just like um, well, it's easy to write this, but in practice, for this Hamiltonian. Uh, the eigenstates and everything is going to be messy and this is why you got hydrogen atom all this anyway th that was the past okay so that was what we did in the uh, Schrodinger picture so now what we want to do is we want to find this for the Heisenberg picture so that is what we shall do uh, now what time is it uh, five more minutes yeah we can't do much okay but let us give a flavor okay so um, to the the key to discover this right is to see, is to look at the uh, eigenstates at time t. Okay, because uh, so yeah, eigenstates, right? So for example, right, um, x at time t is let's say I start with at time zero. So the eigenstates of this is this. And then, um, depending on how the time changes, right? Um, this is the initial time. So now my operator becomes this, okay? So I don't know what is this operator, and I don't even know what is the eigenstates. But for some time t, is going to be some uh, number t over here, okay? And I want to study time evolution. So if I evolve at another time t some more, uh, my operator will become something else much later. So the eigenstates of this operator now become uh, t plus tau. Okay. So just to emphasize, right? We, we wa I want to get a foundation understanding before we do the details next. This is a cat, but this is not the state of the system, right? 
uh, the state of the system is something physical, like what is the electron doing? This is just the list of eigenstates and how they change over time. Okay, so there's a subtle dis differences there. It's not describing the system. Okay, uh, the operator, uh, it, how we describe the system, we will come to this later. Okay, and how do we find the time evolution? Uh, so the, the key is like this, right? Basically, what we have here is this is a cat, and this is another cat. Okay, and we are asking the question of how this change over time. So as time t goes on, this cat will change into another cat. And what is the thing that eats a cat and spits out a new cat? An operator, another operator. So that means what I want to do is I want to find an operator that eats this cat and spits out this cat. Do you follow so far? Does that make sense? Right? So that means I got an operator. So let's call this operator u. And it will depend on t tau because it depends on how much the time changes. Right, so it's the state and it will spit out this new state. Okay, so yes, it depends on, uh, it depends on you. Okay, so uh, what we want to do next is to, to, uh, to find out like how does this change. And once we find out how the, does this change, we can turn our attention to the operators themselves and once we do that we can finally figure out what is the differential equation obeyed by this operator okay so at the moment right now it's, it's a bit abstract a bit a lot of formalism and uh, it will take quite a while after we derive the differential equation we will again use it to solve a familiar problem right this is what chapter 7 is about right learning new ideas uh, and to familiarize ourselves with the idea, we solve some familiar problems. Okay, so yeah, uh, that should be uh, all for today. That's all we have time for. So let me stop the recording here.